Can you see yourself there? You see your children, your grandchildren, your mothers, your fathers, all who have been here and all who are yet to come. We're born into first innocence. Each one of us came from the presence and the power of God, and it is our advent, the coming forth. The Latin root word for it is adventus, the adventus of your beingness that has made such a difference in your life and in so many lives. Your gold, your golden core. The first innocence, the Christ consciousness of you, is the go-to place. You carry it within you, as Paul said, Christ in you, your hope of glory. It is, in fact, never lost, for there is nothing ever lost in God's kingdom. Your first innocence, the Christ of you, is your alpha and your omega. It is your beginning and your ending which leads to new beginnings. Every journey you've ever taken, and this journey of your life here on earth, always has an advent. It's where the word adventure comes from. That's the adventure that you're on. Children feel the excitement of this season of light. You know, they're, they're anticipating something coming. And we as adults sometimes can get jaded. Raise your hand if you know. You don't raise your hand. <laughs> we can get kind of jaded because it seems as if at certain points when we've been so disappointed and had been living in this masquerade that's so empty, that outer form of us that changes constantly, we can get to the point where we can't even remember what the reason is for this season. And yet it comes every year. As we age, we can, it seems, we can lose a sense of wonder and of mystery about this time of the year. And we're constantly wanting to bring that back. We create all kinds of experiences. So we'll remember. Maybe if I go to 3rd Street and there's uh, fake snow coming out at 6.30, and you know, maybe then I'll remember the reason for the season. I can tell you, last year, I haven't been yet this year. I intend to go. I thought it was absolutely magical until I stood right under one of those thinking it was snow and opened my mouth <laughs> and I can tell you it's some kind of soap <laughs> and that's not the reason for the season I drove down Fifth Avenue last night so all the decorations all the you can feel the anticipation there is that part of you that first innocence of you that believes and that'll never go away no matter how many times you say or feel, bah humbug. What's up with this? I'm not going to decorate. I'm not going to lean into this season. What is it? I've done this before. Been done that, been there. Don't need it. Really? Advent is the coming forth of the light of God in you. And all we do is recognize it. It's not that it happens only once a year. It's that we recognize the light within us and the entities, the luz divina that is all around us constantly calling to us to come forth and to not be afraid. Yes, there's part of you that believes. And there's also that beautiful scripture that says, help thou my unbelief. There's a story of a father and a mother, and I love that because metaphysically that means that thinking nature of you and that feeling nature of you. This father and mother are watching their five-year-old son, and he's kneeling beside the cradle. He's up in a chair kneeling beside the cradle of his newborn sister, and they listen intently as he whispers, tell me what God is like. I'm starting to forget. To that part of you that doubts, that part of you that doesn't remember your innocence, I say, just be gentle. Move into the celebration of this Christmas and allow a rebirthing of the awareness of God in you. That's what it is. It's that simple. Just allow a rebirthing of that innocence, innocentia, the blamelessness of you. 
For you were made in the image and likeness of God. And we know that God is love. So the image and likeness of love is what you truly are, who you truly are. And the call of Advent, the call of these candles, these wreaths, these poinsettias, the trees that will appear, the bears that you're imbuing with love, the call of this season is simply to open up to the advent of wondrous light that abides, has never left you, will never leave you, and is here for you to carry. Thank you, God. I want to just ask for you to feel a moment. Just You might even look into the flame of this candle. This is the candle lit for faith. And just for a moment, allow yourself to feel the presence of God. You might feel that presence as a slight breeze wafting across your body temple, as God bumps on your skin, as a stillness in this room as a power and presence that you can perceive. When you're in doubt, when you're in bah humbug, when you're in a mood this Christmas, or in a line, and you're wondering if... Why does everybody have to be in my line? Maybe this line is shorter or this line is shorter and you want to get in every line so you get up there fastest. <laughs> Just stop and feel God. Let the scent of pies and peppermint and hot chocolate and all of the ways that we experience on every sensational level of our body temples, let everything bring you to the God of your being. There's a saying that we live and love in the world. And there's muchness in the world. But to keep our faith lifted, that's something we do anyway. It's something we do even if it's the tiniest, teeniest little faith of the mustard seed, that proverbial mustard seed. That's what we're called to have faith in because that matters. It informs the advent of this season. You're just coming into it and it's time to open up. Let's go to the text in the Bible, the proverbial text on what faith is, is of course Hebrews 11.1. 1. And there's different versions of it, but this is, this, listen to this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Another word for the insurance. So faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is the substance of things hoped for. Faith already exists with you. You don't need more. It's what you're putting your faith in that really matters. Another word for it is confidence in another translation of the Bible. It is the confidence of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Not yet. It's coming. Then there's an advent occurring in your life. The conditions of the world can make us question our faith. And you know, that's a good thing. Because when we question our faith, when we're in doubt, we usually reach out to somebody. We reach within to God. We question. And there's always an answer at the very epicenter of every question that we could ever ask. Are there tensions in the world? You bet. Are there trials and tribulations in the world? You bet. So what? Let's affirm that together. So what? Say it with me. So what? God is here right now bringing you through every aperture in your life. Whether it seems to be a big door or a tiny little space, that's what birth is all about. When we think of Joseph, and let's just think about Joseph for a moment. Joseph's name means whom Jehovah will add to. It also means he who shall increase progressively. So Joseph represents the male, the thinking nature, as I said earlier, in you. That eventually understands that part of you that's practical and it's clear. It's also that part of you that is confused about things. It's the mental nature of you. That's all good. Because one feeds the other and we learn and we grow our faith because of this very nature that's within you, Joseph. And then, of course, there's Mary, 
that gentling, allowing presence that is willing to be, to hold that Christ of you up no matter what, and to give birth to it in the moment that it's needed. It's the combination of those that matters. It's the combination of those that creates that Christ presence that you're giving birth to. In Matthew 1.19, and this is, this is true in all the synoptic gospels, but there is a verse here where Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant and he's not going to have anything to do with her. I mean, can you imagine? You, you're attracted to this young girl, very, very young girl. Joseph was a carpenter. He was an older guy. And he has not even laid hands on her. He finds out she's pregnant. He loves her. And he doesn't know what to do. Have you had experiences in your life where you just don't know what to do? It doesn't make any sense at all. And yet there's something in you saying, stay with this. Just hang in this. He has resolved, it says. But just when he had resolved to do this, and that's to leave, he's going to split. Any of you ever run from situations? Oh, yeah. Especially if you think society is going to put you down or have lots of opinions about what's taking place, right? But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. That's always a sign. If you see an angel of the Lord, listen. Listen. <laughs> Listen up, put your opinions aside, and pay attention. Pray attention. And, and the angel of the Lord said, Joseph, the angel of the Lord is saying to you, um, excuse me, I don't care if you're a woman or a man, doesn't matter, a child. The angel of the Lord is the inner guidance in you, your intuition, your inner knowing, saying, excuse me, to your mental nature. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Don't be afraid of what's taking place. This is, it says, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. I don't care what it is that you think is taking place in your life, God is fully present. And what is coming, the advent of what is coming, is a gift unto you, not only unto you, but unto your world. What are the angels saying to you this Christmas season? Basically, I think it all translates down to relax. Just calm down, for heaven's sakes. Calm toi. It doesn't matter where you are, in a car, walking down the street, in a line. Just be calm. Everybody chill. I went Good Friday, or is it called Good Friday? No, that's not until Easter. Uh, <laughs> Black Friday. I went shopping for the first time on Black Friday. I was looking for boots for, and shoes for Paris. Just saying. It's a good excuse. But I had never been out in the crowds, and even Naples, Florida has crowds. Macy was very crowded, Macy's, it was. But I noticed people giving space for each other. I noticed the people who are tense. I noticed the people who are irritable. I noticed the people who are filled with joy. I noticed the people who, no matter what, stayed calm. We can do it any way we want. But all these trappings and all these things that are taking place are so that you and I will remember the reason for the season. There's good within the situation. Ready or not, ready or not, it's time. Time to what? Time to open your heart, time to open your mind, time to open your hands, and receive ye the holy presence. In Matthew 1, 24, it says, when Jesus awoke from sleep, and he did, as the angel of the Lord commanded him, Joseph woke up. Your mental nature is meant to wake up. Thank God. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We are awakening. Actually, we are already awakened. But what we're doing is we're coming into the realization that we really are. It's not a joke. We really are. You really are the light of the world. And the angel of the Lord is always going to say to you, shh, just relax. Whatever is kind, whatever is loving, whatever is calm, even if it's the tiniest of things, do that. Think in that way. Let Christ be born through you into this situation. Will it be inexplicable? Yes. Will it be magical? Yes. The divine child in you is waiting just on invitation for your ta-da. 
Like Mary and Joseph, you and I are led this season to stand in that coming forth. Not run away. Not be scared. Not be concerned. Even if you don't have a reservation at the inn, don't worry about it. There's room. There's always room. But it doesn't always look like there is. It just doesn't. I just, as a, I love to share a story to kind of land things in the present day. And since this is what's up for me in my life, I just will share this with you. I'm going to Paris because my son is there. And a year ago, August, he's a, a dancer. He, was a, he danced with San Francisco Ballet as a soloist for 10 years from the time he was 17. And he retired <laughs> after 10 years from San Francisco. He had had a dream, always had a dream of dancing in Holland with Netherlands Dance Theater, which is uh, a dance theater that is 99.9% .9 professional ballet dancers, and then they have modern as well. And it's a very creative company, and it's well known throughout the world, and he wanted that more than anything. For years he'd wanted that. And he also had been studying voice, and he was willing to and ready to step into a new arena, but he didn't know what it was going to be. He didn't know how it was going to look. Simultaneously, I mean, in the same week, he was offered a position with Netherlands Dance Theater, and he was offered the lead in a musical on Broadway that was meant to open in the spring of 2015. As you may know, Broadway musicals come and they go. Sometimes there's a concept, and you're getting every, everything together, all the monies, the production team, all the different parts that have to come together, and it can sometimes just fall flat. Garrett knew that he could dance with the ballet. He didn't know if the musical was going to go. He was in this amazing quandary. His faith was at a place where he just didn't know. What do I do, Mom? What do I do? We had conversation after conversation on the phone about what to do. And finally, I just got to ask him a question. Garen, what would inspire you the most? And how could you most inspire others? And he made a choice. He went to Holland. And he danced with Netherlands Dance Theater. It wasn't easy. I mean, my gosh, just to get a credit card that would work there as well as here and a phone and all the things he had to do to put a flat together. And he made a beautiful home for himself, danced there for one year and said, wow, I did it. That's great. And wanted to step back into the musical. They had already hired a lead for the musical. And the musical production had gone on, and actually it is going to pop. It's going to be at the Palace Theater on Broadway. It's going to open in March 2015. But Garen had missed taking the lead because he was moved to do something else. Interestingly enough, the girl who was given the lead female role also said no. She too stepped away. But with Broadway productions where there's eight performances a week, they have to have alternates for the leads. So the two people who were hired, wanted, they wanted to hire as leads, male and female, are now the alternates. My son, who has danced and performed all his life, pretty much, is sitting in the wings of a show waiting to go on stage in Paris. And that's who we're going to go see. And I'm going to see the show. David and I are going to see the show. We're probably not going to see Garen Lee as the lead in the show. But what has shifted in my son is this. For the longest time, he was like, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I can't believe that I didn't take this position. I mean, why didn't I do that? He second-guessed himself, second-guessed himself, second-guessed himself until one day it came to him, oh, my God. One of these days, I'm going to get to go on stage and dance the lead in a Broadway musical. It'll be my first time. And he called on that Christ within him. And now, as I, I talked to him this morning, now backstage, he's like, we're going on. We've already gone on. It's so exciting. It's a wonderful performance. I can't wait to get out there. I don't know when I'm going to get out there, but I can't wait to get out there. It's the advent of Christmas for him. It's the advent of Christmas for you. It's a time of wonder. It's a time to listen to the angels. Peace. Be still. Just be calm. Move into the season and bring that Christed awareness that is in you. And if you can't believe 
in much. Believe in what you can believe in. Remember yourself as that tiny, innocent babe who is totally dependent upon the love that surrounded that child. You, totally dependent upon the love of God, the touch of others, a voice, a kind word, a kind deed. And bring that with faith believing into your life and the lives of all those who are with you in this first week, this faith-filled week of Advent. God bless you.